Good Wednesday evening and welcome to the NCW Life Evening News. I'm Grant Olson. Here are a few of the stories we have coming up for you tonight. A handgun has gone missing from the Grant County Sheriff's Office inventory and steps are underway to find it. The city of Wenatchee will take in nearly $42 million more in 2024 than it has this year under its current proposed budget. Summer like weather returns over the next three days before much cooler and wetter conditions move in next week. An East Wenatchee man is charged with four counts of child rape for allegedly sexually abusing a child over the course of seven years. The alleged victim disclosed instances of abuse over the summer, identifying the suspect as 41-year-old Ismael Zavala Sanchez. Douglas County Sheriff's deputies arrested Zavala one week ago, and prosecutors filed formal charges on Monday. Police say a recorded phone call between Zavala and the victim included admissions of guilt from Zavala. He's due to be arraigned tomorrow in Douglas County Superior Court. Attorneys for accused murderer Dalton Scott Potter say they don't plan to call any witnesses in his trial, which starts next week. Potter is accused of shooting and killing 37-year-old Alyssa Longwell on the shoulder of Badger Mountain Road last January and then opening fire on witnesses before fleeing the scene. Prosecutors have leveled nine criminal counts, including first and second degree murder. In a pretrial hearing yesterday, defense attorney Jesse Collins said he has no plans to put witnesses witnesses on the stand when the trial begins on Monday. Meanwhile, Douglas County prosecutors have summoned 21 people to testify in their case. The trial is expected to last about two weeks. A handgun has gone missing from the Grant County Sheriff's Office inventory and steps are underway to find it. Sheriff Joe Crete said in a Facebook post today the 40 caliber Glock Model 22 is unaccounted for after an internal audit of the department's armory. Crete says the Glock was last recorded in the agency's possession back in 2021. The pistol is still believed to be within the department and the sheriff says there's no record of it being used in a crime. He says the search for the misplaced weapon is ongoing. A short-term rental property that operated for nearly 20 years has failed to have it shut down by Chelan County overturned. Robert and Brenda Wilbur formerly owned and operated a house in a detached cabin as overnight rentals off Icicle Road in Leavenworth starting in 2006. When Chelan County changed its ordinances in 2021 to restrict short-term rentals or STRs, the Wilbers sought to continue the practice, but their permit was turned down by both the county and its hearing examiner because the new code does not allow two STRs on a single parcel of land. In a decision Tuesday, the State Court of Appeals upheld that denial. The Wilbers sold their Leavenworth property earlier this year. When we come back, brush fire season has yet to end in the Wenatchee Valley with a fire reported around noon today. And Wenatchee Valley College has named a temporary replacement for their Dean of Math, Science and Engineering. I'm Grant Olson and you're watching the NCW Life Evening News. Winter is a great time to trade in your current hot tub. Turn your old hot tub into money with Blue Lagoon Pool and Spa's trade-in program. You can save $500 to $1,000 off of any new Artesian Spa or take advantage of a free Bluetooth music experience. Blue Lagoon Pool and Spa recommends draining your hot tub every three months. Ask us about our drain and refill special. Stop on by Blue Lagoon Pool and Spa today. Hi everybody, Dan Coots alongside Jesse Coble from Alpine Air. Uh, there's like, there's ice on my heat pump and under my heat pump. Well, ice under your heat pump is normal. When we go into a defrost cycle, it melts the frost off, creates water, which freezes to the ground. Ice around your heat pump is a thing that you should probably give us a call about. Turn to the experts at Carrier and Alpine Air for heat and air. Call Alpine Air. Thanks, Jesse. Thanks. Eight different political campaigns, 16 candidates, three cities deciding their future. NCW Life wants you to be informed when you cast your ballot in this November's election. That's why we're sitting down with candidates across the ballot for mayor, city council, and school board 
to talk through the issues and help you make the best choice. Look for those interviews right here on this channel starting October 22nd and on our website, ncwlife.com. The city of Wenatchee will take in nearly $42 million more in 2024 than it has this year under its current proposed budget. City council members will vote on the final budget November 16th. They got an advanced look at the budget Thursday, which calls for more than a $1 million increase in the amount spent on police services. Wenatchee will also spend an estimated $7.7 .7 million next year for a long-planned renovation of the downtown convention center. The 2023 budget, I believe, was we built the revenues uh, we thought we were being a little bit aggressive, but it turns out we were very conservative in our estimates for revenue for 2023, and we'll probably beat that by 5 or 6 percent. Um, and so for 2024, we're going to add another few percent um, expected growth on that. So that's why it looks like it's a huge, um, a huge growth, but it really has to do with the conservative 2023 and then trying to be a real realistic 2024. The police budget, it looks like it's going up. Um, a lot of that is related to uh, they had four positions added uh, through the budget request process. Three of them, three of the positions are for the new traffic enforcement unit and uh, that has mostly offsetting grant funds for the next two years, um, but the big reason that their budget's going up is because of, uh, because of new positions. Well, it seems brush fire season is yet to end in the Wenatchee Valley. The regional fire department responded just before noon today to a small fire in Halverson Canyon, about five miles southwest of Wenatchee. Firefighters said the fire was slow growing and was held to less than an acre in size, with crews taking just a half hour to achieve full suppression. No injuries or property damage were reported. Wenatchee Valley College is named a temporary replacement for their Dean of Math, Science, and Engineering. Agriculture faculty member Jeff Bullock began acting as Dean last week. While in the role, he'll be responsible for division leadership and supervision of department chairs, faculty and staff, tenure committees, area plan reviews, faculty workload, tenure processes, professional development, and hiring. Bullock has been a full-time faculty member at Wenatchee Valley College since 2018, and WVC Vice President of Instruction Todd Treat said that Bullock Bullock is, quote, imminently qualified to support these programs. Bullock replaced Holly Bringman, who now serves as the Apple STEM coordinator for the North Central Educational Service District. Coming up next, Smart Growth America, a national advocacy organization that focuses on bettering neighborhoods around the country, recently highlighted Wenatchee in a new video. We'll show you in tonight's feature story. Unseasonably warm, sunny weather through Saturday and then much cooler and wet by next week. I'll have all the details in your complete North Central Washington weather forecast. That and much more still to come tonight. Please stay with us. As Chelan's premier lifestyle store, Willow, find unique home decor, clothing, jewelry, and more. Come visit for a welcoming and memorable shopping experience. Deepwater Electronics is your one-stop shop for the latest in TV and sound technology. Whether you build your home theater or let them do it for you, Deepwater Electronics is the clear choice. The switch is on to T-Mobile. Get the best 5G experience and the customer service you depend on. Only at Chelan Wireless in downtown Chelan. We're turning up the heat with the hottest deals of the year. Right now, during the hot summer clearance sale, only at Click It RV. Number one in sales and service. The best RV brands. Over 1,000 to choose from. And the best deals of the year on remaining 2023 model year-end clearance with incredible 30% off. Brand new RVs discounted up to 30%. Save thousands. Plus, no payments until 2024. During the hot summer clearance sale, now only at Click It RV. Five superstore locations. Hurry in today. Eight different political campaigns, 16 candidates, three cities deciding their future. NCW Life wants you to be informed when you cast your ballot in this November's election. That's why we're sitting down with candidates across the ballot for mayor, city council, and school board to talk through the issues and help you make the best choice. Look for those interviews right here on this channel starting October 22nd and on our website, ncwlife.com.
Smart Growth America, a national advocacy organization that focuses on bettering neighborhoods around the country, recently highlighted Wenatchee in a new video. In a collaboration with the Washington State Department of Health, Smart Growth America tells the story of a quick build project on the intersection of Methouse Street and Okanagan and Arondo Avenues. The city of Wenatchee partnered with the community on the project and with the help from CAFE, the team who worked on the project got feedback from the people who would most benefit from the improvements. In tonight's feature story, here's a look at that video. The city of Wenatchee identified an intersection where we wanted to see improvements in traffic safety for vehicles, public transit, people walking, people riding their bike, and any other mode of transportation. So a quick build is something that you can remove, change, adjust, and modify in real time to kind of make sure that the project you are designing is one that will work the best for all users. Part of the quick build included a pop-up market, which has food, performers, vendors, with an outreach opportunity and collecting feedback. We asked several questions where community were invited to come in. They were all giving sticky dots and they were to place them on what was important to them. And there's quite a few people there that I remember. It felt like you belonged and it was like just, it was a good feeling. Challenges working with the nearby businesses were mainly due to not really understanding what a quick build project means. So it's been important to connect with the businesses on an educational level. I'm Melissa and I am the owner of Sewers West, just right across from the intersection. If they weren't communicating with me, then I wouldn't really know what was going on. And so I just would look out there and you know, the road could be closed and I wouldn't even know why. Some of the most valuable feedback comes from people that don't see it working. And I always try and respond to them with a great appreciation because they're usually the most honest and the most critical and they make you really look at your project closely. So the improvements that we did at this intersection, they connected the bike lane gap, so connected bike lanes coming from the west with those coming from the south and extended those into the downtown corridor. So we brought the two streets behind me, brought those in closer to the crossing street, provide better delineation for bikes, vehicles, and pedestrians through the intersection. One of the largest changes that we made was this section right here. So where it starts at this corner to the end of that second crosswalk, was all one single crosswalk. And now you can see this island here didn't used to be there before. So we shortened this one and shortened that one and gave a refuge for pedestrians. Since the improvements went in last summer, there hasn't been any collisions here at the intersection between vehicles or pedestrians or bikes. Three takeaways from this project are keep the community involved, stay flexible within the design process, and then be solution-oriented so the feedback can be really valuable. And the crosswalk is a lot better now for the pedestrians crossing that road. To come get coffee, food, pastries, all the things. <laughs> so I think that the community feels good. We can all proudly say, we had a part in this. See this beautiful place? We had a part in this. Time now to take a look at your North Central Washington weather forecast. Hope you had a great Wednesday. Boy, it was a beautiful fall day out there today, wasn't it? Little bit of a breeze, and we did see just a few high clouds out there. Beautiful shot from our Rondo SkyFi uh, camera, and you can see Turtle Rock in the shot and beautiful Columbia River and plenty of sunshine out there today and through probably about Saturday. And then we are in for some changes. We will see some chilly valley rain, especially as we get into probably Monday night and into Tuesday next week. And yes, mountain snow, a definite possibility as we get in probably Tuesday and then into Wednesday. And we all can see some of this widespread frost. So as you can see, big weather changes are on the way for us, but not for a few more days. Enjoy these next couple of days. 67, our unofficial high temperature today, just beautiful out there. 59 is where we should be now for a normal high temperature. 72, our record, and that was set in 1974. 43 this morning, 40 is our normal low temperature, so pretty much right in the ballpark there. But boy, it was a cold one back in 1982, 26 degrees 
the overnight low. Sunrise this morning, 724, and the sun sets tonight at 608. Yeah, losing a lot of that daylight. Remember, we turn clocks back here November 6, so it's coming up. 74 for our high temperatures tomorrow in the Columbia Basin. Afreda, also Quincy checking it. Can you believe that? 74 degrees tomorrow, October 19th. 73 for Wenatchee, 72 in Eniat. Beautiful day in Lake Chelan, and a beautiful day in Leavenworth tomorrow, too, with a high temperature of 71. Tonight, we will see mostly clear skies. Two areas of high pressure keeping our skies relatively clear. You can see the ridge all the way up into British Columbia. And yeah, clear skies tonight, mild, low temperatures right around that 50 degree mark. For Thursday, even better than today. Sunshine out there, warmer with highs in the low to mid 70s. Maybe a few scattered showers in northwest Washington, but that's about it. We are precip free until we get into next week. For Friday, mostly sunny skies. Uh, we will see warmer temperatures as we get into Friday. I should say a little bit cooler rather with highs in the low 70s, but man, that's still going to be about 13 degrees above where we should be for this time of year, and that goes for all of the west coast of the U.S. By Saturday, some high clouds mainly thanks to this area of low pressure spinning off the California coast. It'll bring a few clouds our way, mainly high cloudiness for us on Saturday. Still warm out there. High temperatures to kick off the weekend at 70 degrees and then mostly cloudy. But the big news, notice our airflow coming right down from Alaska and that is going to bring some cooler weather our way. Scattered showers of possibility Sunday, high temperatures in the mid 60s. And this is where we really start to see some changes on Monday. Look at the clouds all over the eastern Pacific. We will see partly cloudy skies here and cooler. Highs back to close to normal on Monday into those low 60s. And then on Tuesday, here's that area of low pressure that came from the Gulf of Alaska. It's going to kick up showers. This is early in, in the afternoon on Tuesday. But look what happens as we get into the evening hours. And yes, snow flurries and snow showers, a definite possibility in the Cascades on Tuesday. Rain likely for us and cooler with high temperatures only in the mid 50s. All right. Seven day forecast 45 tonight. Beautiful tomorrow at 73 degrees, mostly sunny on Friday and 72. We're going to stay unseasonably warm right into Saturday, 70 with some high clouds kicking off our weekend. And then by Sunday, mostly cloudy skies, just a scattered shower to Sunday and 67, partly cloudy and 63 for Monday. And then weather really changes on Tuesday with mostly cloudy skies, rain likely, high temperature 57 degrees. And that's a look at your North Central Washington weather forecast. Coming up next, tonight's sports report with Eric Granstrom and more as the NCW Life Evening News continues right after this. If you're looking for the best way to buy a pre-owned Honda, look no further than Honda True. You get less to worry about and more benefits. Choose from three different tiers with up to 10 model years of Honda vehicles. Inspected by a Honda trained technician. Discover why Honda True means less compromise and more of what you love about Honda. Apple Valley Honda, your local Honda dealer in East Wenatchee. Eight different political campaigns, 16 candidates, three cities deciding their future. NCW Life wants you to be informed when you cast your ballot in this November's election. That's why we're sitting down with candidates across the ballot for mayor, city council, and school board to talk through the issues and help you make the best choice. Look for those interviews right here on this channel starting October 22nd and on our website, ncwlife.com. Hi, this is Eric Granstrom, the NCW Live Channel Sports Director. While the teams are working hard, we're working hard to bring you 20 broadcasts this fall. Over the middle, the ball is caught, and just like that, gets through everybody. And it's Eastmont. To the end zone, touchdown, Eastmont. It's Wenatchee. Oh, Stephen Cashmere. Killed by now. It's in. Good maneuver. Red foot. Go, 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 go. Right here on your local TV station, the NCW Life Channel.
The Arizona Diamondbacks were shut out for the first time in postseason franchise history last night, falling to the Philadelphia Phillies by a score of 10 to nothing in the National League Championship Series. That game in Philadelphia, it was Kyle Schwarber going deep twice while JT Real Muto drove in three runs for the Phillies, who grab a 2 0 lead. That series will shift to Arizona coming up tomorrow night. Meanwhile, the American League Championship Series is underway right now for game three. That's in Arlington, where the Rangers hold a 2 0 edge over the Houston Astros, that game being broadcast on FS1. The Seattle Kraken are winless so far in four opportunities in NHL play, falling last night at home in their opener at Climate Pledge Arena to the Colorado Avalanche by a score of 4-1. to one. Of course, it was Colorado that they took to Game 7 last year to reach the Western Conference Finals. Things looked good early for the Kraken as it was Riley Yamamoto finding the back of the nets. However, Colorado would, uh, it, it would counter and would come up with the victory. Fighting with Everly. Up ice, it's Cartier, peeling toward the slot, got blocked on the way in, bounces off the end boards, Yamamoto toward the net, tried to poke it home, and Cartier hit it off the iron, and now the Kraken scores, with Yamamoto on the reload, and Seattle strikes first. So Nachushkin back down, playing with Lekkonen and Johansson on the second unit, Nachushkin toward the net, tumbles there, they score! Lekkonen ties the game at one! Shielding on Taves, who's able to fight that free to McCarr. Coming up on 40 seconds to go, the Avalanche clear. O'Connor's got it. Short-handed. Scores! And the Avs lead. Six and a half to go, Avalanche by one. McKinnon pivots on Tolvanen. Back out Cagliano. Move for Gerard. Fire him a one-timer. Flutters and breaks the stick on the way in. And come back down toward the half wall. Cagliano on a pinch. Here's Gerard for Rankin. He scores! And just like that, it's a two-goal Colorado lead. Stott, Jared McCann, who sits in the box. Burakovsky, fanned on it, right point. Met by Nachushkin. Burakovsky lost it. Nachushkin's got it toward the net. He scores! The empty netter to put it on ice for the Avalanche. Poked out by Gerard into the circle for Burakovsky. That will do it here in Seattle. Colorado has started this season 3-0. They get a 4-1 win over the Kraken. Kraken players and coach Dave Haxtell says they're playing well. They just need to do more on the offensive end. You know, we have to find a way to collectively. I mean, there are spurts where you, you see the, the, the play where we're doing it, especially in St. Louis. We, we carry the play a lot of the time. But, I mean, obviously, this is, you, you can only score one goal. It's, it's tough to win a hockey game. So, um, you know, we, we got to find a way to, to bear down and, and, you know, get the, to get the ball rolling. Because once it does, I, I know it's going to go. I mean, obviously, it's only four games in. But, you know, you want to try and find a sense of urgency, a sense of, um, sense of passion and get going again. Absolutely. You know, anytime you can score a goal in your hometown um, for your home team, um, you know, it feels really special. Uh, my parents were in the barn, too, tonight. So, um, yeah, a little extra special. The reality is we, you know, we've come away from the last two hockey games feeling like we you know we did a lot of really good things real positive things at the end of the night you're you're battling for two points so uh, we lacked execution in a few spots tonight and you know against a good team uh, that, that leaves us on the wrong side of the ledger so you know we've got to take that upon ourselves we've got to you know we've got to execute a little bit better in some of the offensive situations uh, continue doing the things uh, that we're doing well. We're doing a lot of really good things. Uh, we played hard again. You know, we played hard in a lot of areas of the game. We ex executed pretty well in a lot of areas, uh, but we need a little bit more. Seattle will host Carolina coming up tomorrow night at 7 o'clock at Climate Pledge Arena. That game will be broadcast on Root Sports Northwest. The Wenatchee Wild are on the road for a midweek clash in the Trace Cities tonight, taking on the Americans at Toyota Center. That game getting underway at 7.05. You can listen for it with our friend Austin Drotty on the column, 560 KPQ. The Wild currently tied for eighth place in the Western Conference of the WHL at 3-5-1. and one. The Americans in a, what, five-way tie for third right now with a five, four and three record. Again, that game coming up at 7.05. Make it a three-peat for the Wenatchee Panthers in Big Nine Volleyball. Wenatchee swept aside Davis last night at Wenatchee High School three sets to none to claim their third straight 
uh, Big Nine regular season district volleyball championship. Congratulations to the Panthers. Sebastian Moraga filled in for me last night and had the call here on the NCW Life channel. 8-0. Ava Joberry. This time goes long, taking no chances. The slam. Good block. Good block that time by Riley Jones. Tough touch. Oh, what a touch. What a touch. Fooled three pirate players. Miss Kara Demergent did. And with that, she closed the book on this one-sided first set. Pass the block, the diving Miss Tucker. Garfias, the slam to the back line. Effort that time. And that one sails long, and it is two to nothing. Winachi, 25 to 15, the second set. Serving is Cheyenne Hall. Winachi point, double touch, and that does it. Winechi takes this one in straight sets. 25-11, 25-15, 25-15. How important was it for you guys to get off to a strong start on every set? It was really important because so that we get all of our team in and everyone gets playing time. It was good to start out strong and just, yeah, keep a good lead. Now you play Lake Stevens next. Is yeah. this a bit of a breather since it's a non-league or you're going to go just as hard? Um, they did really well at state last year, so it's going to be a difficult game, but hopefully we can pull it out. Another big nine action last night. Moses Lake gave West Valley all it could handle, and the Rams came out on top 27-25, 17-25, 28-26, 25-23. If Freda swept Othello, Cashmere took down Omak 25-21, 15, and 17. Quincy won in three sets over Cascade. Another volleyball action last night. Okanagan swept Liberty Bell. Manson beat Lake Roosevelt, three zip. Brewster blanked Tenasket. Eniat swept Wilson Creek. Moses Lake Christian beat Bridgeport. 3-0. Waterville Mansfield took three from Pateras. In Big Nine soccer last night, Wenatchee dominated 5-0 over Davis. West Valley came from behind to beat Moses Lake 4-2. Prosser edged Defreda 2-1. If uh, Chelan blanked Manson 3-0. Cascade got by Quincy 2-1. Cashmere clocked Omak 4-0. In B-League soccer last night, Okanagan blanked Lake Roosevelt 6-0. Pateras edged Bridgeport 4-3. Tadaskit topped Oroville, get this score 18-2, and Brewster beat Liberty Bell 4-0. And thanks to the Yakima Valley Herald, we have some cross-country scores to report. West Valley swept the boys and girls Big Nine meet yesterday over Wenatchee and Moses Lake. Also, thanks to Cashmere's Facebook page, we know that uh, Cascade topped the Bulldogs in a head-to-head -head matchup yesterday in cross-country. 16-47 for the girls, 20-35 for the boys. And just a reminder that we'll be out at Lebofto Field of the Apple Bowl on Friday night to help the Wenatchee Panthers celebrate homecoming as they welcome the Sunnyside Grizzlies in Big Nine football. Grant Olson, Brandon Harley, and yours truly will have the call starting with our pregame at 6.30 right here on the NCW Life channel. I'm Eric Granstrom with sports. Have a happy Wednesday. On tomorrow's edition of Wake Up Wenatchee Valley, Dr. Gene Sherritt, part of the ad hoc group that calls themselves Kindness Counts. It's been a great year for you guys, and you're wrapping it up. Not wrapping it up, but you're having a little wing ding on November 4th. We're going to tell people about it, won't we, Gene? You bet. Thank you, Dan. It's going to be at the Wenatchee High School Commons, and the Glad Song Singers are going to join in a concert, free concert, to the community, and donations will be accepted. There's no admission fee, and that's being sponsored by the Wenatchee Valley Senior Activity Center and the Random Acts of Kindness Club at Wenatchee High School. Circle your calendar for November 4th and bring your checkbook, Gene Sharon, <laughs> from Kindness Counts on the next edition of Wake Up Wenatchee Valley. And that will do it for our newscast tonight. For more on these stories and other news from around North Central Washington, you can find us on Facebook or our website at ncwlife.com. And remember, if you see news happening, we'd like to hear from you. You can send us an email at news at ncwlife.com or give us a call at 888-6295. 
I'm Grant Olson. Thanks so much for being with us and have a great night. Hello, television family. Grab your cup of coffee each weekday morning and join me. I'm Dan Koontz, the host of Wake Up in Anchee Valley. It's Wake Up in Anchee Valley. It's everything you need to start your day. We're live and we're local at 7 a.m. every weekday on the NCW Life Channel.